Everyone, the CDC has released new guidelines for how health workers should gear up to treat Ebola patients. Fox State's Melissa Reed just got back from visiting the CDC in Atlanta, was there through the day yesterday. She talked to a leader of this Ebola task force, and she joins us now live with more information. What a fascinating visit it was. It was really interesting to be inside there. Fox 8 cameras went inside the Centers for Disease Control's Emergency Operations Center. Now that is where the United States leading experts on infection infectious disease, as well as government heads and doctors meet to tackle this disease. This medical care task force at the CDC's emergency response for Ebola was activated back on August 1st. And last night, the CDC released new guidelines calling for face shields, hoods, boot covers and other garb that leave no part of the body exposed. This all comes after two nurses were diagnosed with the disease after treating an Ebola patient. One of them is Amber Vincent, who spent some time in Northeast Ohio right before she was diagnosed with Ebola. And according to Dr. John Brooks, lead of the medical care task force handling the CDC's emergency response to Ebola, they are using Vincent's case as a way to determine what went wrong in Dallas. When we talk to other experts who've treated patients overseas in West Africa with viral hemorrhagic fevers, uh, Ebola is one, but also Marburg and Lhasa are two other infections that are kind of in the same family to understand what they do to prevent getting infected. And then we take all that information, kind of put it together, sit down with a bunch of experts and say, okay, what can we do to better the prevention benefit of our recommendations to really raise the bar higher to prevent people from getting infected because that's our first priority. From what I'm hearing though you're saying is that you thought you guys had enough guidelines mm -hmm. but you didn't. Well we know that the guidance we had was best was the best informed guidance from what was known at the time and as a result of the events in Dallas we're now able to go back and say okay we need to build up on this. Speaking of that, those new CDC guidelines also call for a trained monitor to supervise the donning and taking off of the protective wear, and they also call for repeated training and practice. The, the uh, director there, the head of that, very open though about the fact that, you know, I mean, maybe there were some mistakes here and they are working very hard to try to get this right and prevent anything else from happening. And even today, there's still a lot that they don't know, still no. trying to figure out how Vincent and this other nurse it got Ebola. Yeah, and they are actually, the center is right beside Emory mm -hmm. Hospital. So they utilize that location to go back and use uh, Vincent as well as the other nurse fan as the kind of, uh, not only the investigation, but the, they were the reasoning behind these changes that they're making now. Brightest minds of the world working on it and getting Absolutely. a handle on it better every day. And really there were people from all over. You're talking the lead of infectious diseases, mm -hmm. the lead of medical, uh, even across the world. They were also members of the military. They're all in this room and Fox 8 got to go inside. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay, great job, Melissa, thank you. Well, here, a, a remarkable step for a Northeast Ohio teacher. Yeah, well, back in July, Sharon Budd was critically hurt when the car she was riding in was hit by a rock thrown from an overpass.